Megan Thee Stallion and her label owner, Carl Crawford, are dragging each other online. And y'all, they are spilling all the tea. And Khloe Kardashian is being trolled by fans online again for her love life. Honestly, this woman just likes to pick the worst men possible. Y'all, there is so much drama going on between Meg Thee Stallion and her label, and it has gotten ultra messy. They've also dragged each other to court, you know, suing and counter suing and all that stuff. So it looks like we're gonna be living in this drama for quite some time. Now, it is very common for artists to have some disputes with their label. You know, an artist feels like they got a bad deal from the label and the label refusing to pay the artist and the artist wanting to leave the label. There are so many reasons that artists clash with their label and we have seen it so many times in the past. It's nothing new. But very few fights have gotten as bad as the fight that we are currently seeing between Megan and her label, 1501 Certified Entertainment, which is owned by no one else than Carl Crawford. Yeah, the name Carl Crawford who used to play baseball. Anywho, after he stopped playing baseball, he set up 1501 Certified Entertainment and here we are. So back to the drama. Megan has wanted to leave the label for quite some time now, but her contract has not expired yet. The label is not allowing her to leave and I can't say that I'm surprised at this because she is their major money maker. In 2021, Megan released Something for the Hotties, which was referred to as a mixtape, even though it actually is an album. Well, sort of. I don't know why they didn't just go ahead and call it an album, but according to Megan, the label signed off and agreed that it actually was an album. Megan then believed that this was her second to the last album with the label and that she was almost done. But then Carl Crawford said, psych, and claimed that Something for the Hotties is a mixtape, not an album, and that Megan isn't free yet and still owes two more albums because she hasn't met the minimum recording requirement yet. This made Megan ultra mad, and this led to a dispute. She sued Carl and the label, and according to her lawyer, the label is just trying to tie Megan down for the label's financial gain. Well, the label wasn't having none of this, and they countersued Megan, claiming that Something for the Hotties is actually not an album, but a mixtape. They said, Something for the Hotties is made up of 21 recordings and includes spoken interlude recordings on which Megan Thee Stallion does not appear, as well as several previously released recordings. It was described in the music press as a compilation record of archival materials and some new recordings. So according to the label, they're saying that they didn't sign off on something for the hotties as an album and that Megan still owes them two albums. They also made this post to their official Instagram page and wrote, stop playing victim, Meg. You haven't paid for one show since 2019, hiding behind Rock Nation. You can keep that BS mixtape and send over that straight drop whenever you're ready. When Megan heard about the countersuit and the claim that she has allegedly not made the label any money for three years, she went crazy and took it Twitter to put Carl and the label on blast. In her first tweet, she claimed, first the man over my label said I don't make him any money. Now he counter suing trying to keep me on his label because he wants me to make more money. Ha! If I don't make you no money, why not just drop me? Then she said, let me go. My lawyers asked him for an expense report. Money 1501 supposedly has spent on me. Why this grown man put his jewelry and chains on there? Lord free me from this joke of a label. I chose not to say nothing about court and address stuff online, but I'm getting tired of being painted as the bad guy 24 7 the last girl on 1501 mad at this man too ah. now this is where things got really interesting because megan threw a lot of shade at carl and claimed that he liked to do drugs she wrote carl i don't want to be signed to your pill popping behind you talking about i ain't paid for a show and you sound slow i'm the artist i don't pay you directly maybe fight the man you signed to and you might see some money you effing powder head like that wasn't bad enough she also claimed that she hasn't been paid since 2019 she tweeted, also, how can I owe you any of my money outside of music when your team can't even provide actual statements of what I owe? You also haven't paid me since 2019. Your team signed off on something for the hotties to count as an album. Now it's not jokes. She also accused Carl of trying to use her for clout saying, Carl, you got a cold contact with 300 and talking ish to me like I got your effing money. You are f***ing me. Why? Because you want to be famous, not rich. Ask Kevin Lyles with your money ass stupid ass. Now, Megan came for Carl and she came for him hard. Carl has responded to her and well, it looks like he is not about to go down without a fight. On his Instagram stories, he wrote, Hey, y'all believe this BS if y'all want to. I don't got Twitter fingers, so I'm not about to type stuff all day. But I promise everything said about that matter is a lie. The truth will be out soon enough. He also said, This all coming from a bona fide alcoholic who slept
up with the whole industry, including her best friend's man. Child, Carl definitely came prepared. Now, I don't like the fact that Carl tried to shame Megan, but she did call him a powder head and claim that he popped pills. She threw the first punch, so I don't think I can be on anyone's side here. They're both just extra messy. Also, there were rumors that Megan likes to drink a little bit too much, and so people even claim that this is why Party left her. Tory Lanez also alleged that Megan's bestie, Kelsey Nicole, who used to date Tory, found out that he had been messing around with Megan, and that's the reason that Megan and Kelsey got into an argument that night that Megan allegedly got shot by Tory. I'm not saying that Carl's claims is right. I'm just saying what I heard. So y'all don't come for me in the comments. A fan said, the fact that Carl Crawford had to resort to slut shaming Megan lets me know that everything that she was saying is the truth, and it hit a nerve. Another fan said, so it's okay for Meg is starting to speak out about Tori and Carl Crawford, but when they say something, it's a problem. Pure sympathy. The case is still in court, so I know for sure that we haven't seen the end of this drama just yet, and something tells me that it's going to get even messier as time goes on. But let's move on to another topic, and that's Khloe Kardashian and her alleged new Boo Trey songs. First off, I have to acknowledge that I'm a little bit happy that Khloe is finally moving on from Tristan after so many years. I mean, the man put her through so much but she didn't leave him even when things got super toxic so but it does look like Tristan getting another woman pregnant was the last straw for Chloe because it looks like she's finally moving on before this a source told E magazine that Chloe was open to meeting new people the source said Chloe is getting back out there and ready to move on from Tristan she seems open to it and is interested in going out and having fun she is slowly getting out on the dating scene and excited to meet someone new she feels a sense of relief and excitement to move on to the next chapter and is open to what the future holds. Chloe is a really optimistic person and knows she will find love again. Well, it looks like Trey songs as Chloe someone new. Well, kind of new. You see, Trey and Chloe used to be a thing and they dated for a while before breaking up in 2016. This was way before she got together with Tristan though because she and Tristan didn't start dating until 2017. Uh, does Chloe just never learn? Like, how does she keep picking the worst men every single time. Chloe seems to be a smart woman in many other parts of her life except her love life and it looks like she isn't done making bad choices. How does it make sense to try to get over Tristan by moving on to Trey's songs? I mean Trey has so many allegations against him by multiple women at different times. I mean even Kiki Palmer had spoken up about how creepy Trey is and she used to be friends with Trey. Chloe really needs to get her act together and stop dating bottom barrel men. Chloe and Trey sparked dating rumors again when a source revealed that they were together at Justin Bieber's super exclusive party in early March 2022. Sources claimed that Chloe and Trey made sure that they had lots of private time together even though they were at a party. They spent the night together talking and catching up. Sources also claim that Chloe and Trey have stayed in touch since they broke up in 2016 and that they have a lot of love for each other. Fans have been clowning Chloe big time on social media with this fan saying, Chloe Kardashian gone from Cheetah Tristan Thompson to Trey songs? The woman hates herself and you can't tell me otherwise. You can't afford therapy. Just go, baby. Another fan said, apparently Khloe Kardashian might be dating Trey songs. That girl really just doesn't know what's good for her. He's gonna put her through the same ringer all over again. And someone else said, Khloe Kardashian and Trey songs? Man, she really be loving them dogs, huh? Ooh. Child, Khloe needs to really wake up and understand that she can do better than these bottom barrel men that she seems to be obsessed with. But if you thought this entire situation was a mess wait till you watch this next video